Hi, my name is Don Seymour. I'm from the Kellum Indian Band, and um, my Indian name is Kamkhais. It means grizzly bear. And I went to the residential school from 1969 to 1974. And um, there were two different kind of students that came here. There's a day scholar and people at residential school, that residents. And um, I was really fortunate that I got to go home every day to see my parents. But the residential school, like my mom and my father, my mother, my father came and um, so like their second generation of the residential school. And uh, residential school, they were taken away from their families when they were very young age. And their mothers and their grannies and uncles and everybody had, the family structure was uh, no longer existed. And um, the children were taken away for 10 months out of the year for about 12 years. And after 12 years, they were sort of kicked out and they were brought back to, to the reservation. And um, I'll give you an example of my father. He was 74 years old and he didn't know how to say, I love you, until he passed away on his deathbed. He told me that he loved me. And that was the first time I've heard it when I was 41 years old. And that really meant a lot to me because um, I love you is just a, this is a four letter word. And um, I have a daughter now and she's six years old and the word love is always shared every time we see each other. And um, the effects of the residential school, I was wanting to do a story about the school itself and it's going to be, it's where are all the children. And I, I worked with the membership for the band and the residential school, you can see the effects from when they took the children away and um, to this day we're still feeling the effects because of the alcoholism and the drug abuse and the children that are they're put in the social care. But 80% of our kids are in social care in British Columbia. And the other, another high stat for First Nations is like the penitentiaries, about 60% are First Nations. And the other high stat is we're only 1% of the whole population in Canada. So you kind of put all that together and it all stems from the residential school. And um, they were only here for 100 years, but we lived in harmony in this valley for over 40,000 years. So just that 100 years has disrupted the whole balance of our life as First Nations. Thank you. The student residential school closed in 1978. It was one of the last in British Columbia to actually, there's an operating school. And what happened is like the band took over control. And way back when, we didn't know what to do with these buildings. And there's a, about five core people that decided, what are we gonna do? We wanted, we had all these different dreams. And we wanted our own school, our own university our own band office, our own government center. And to this day, this building houses over 16 individual band businesses. And our band office is located here also. And we also have um, affiliated with two universities and we have our own band run school.
squashed a blank meal. So welcome. Hello, my name is Evelyn Camille. I am Shoe Shop from Kamloops Indian Band. When I first came through the doors of the residential school, I was so scared because um, I didn't know what to expect. And um, when I first seen a priest and a nun, is a, I couldn't figure out what, what they were doing because the priests were sort of like wearing dresses. And I couldn't figure out what kind of a world I was in because they showed no emotions or anything. And where I came from, my family, like we always were greeted, you know, like with good morning and whatever. And um, when we came through the doors, it was just a different world. Okay, uh, this, on this side was the girl side. The boys and girls were completely separated as you entered from into this building. And on that side is the boy side. And right in the center is the chapel on which we spent considerable time it was the learning the prayers of the Roman Catholic. I spent 10 years in, in this school, in the res Kamloops Indian Residential School. I was about five or six when I first came. I don't remember, but I remember the uh, bewilderment, the sadness, the loss of my identity as I entered in through that door. We were herded down to downstairs to the recreation room and stripped completely of our identity. Our hair was cut very short above the ears, just and uh, everything of our personal items were taken away. Uh, many of us did not know how to speak English, and we could not understand the directions or uh, what, of what we were supposed to be doing. And those that uh, could understand our language was our older brothers and sisters, but they, they could not be with us at that time. We, we were separated completely, even, I came from a large family, and uh, I did not know any of my family. There was uh, 10, 12 of us in our family, and uh, I, we could not get an interpreter for many of us who could not understand English. And when we could not understand English, uh, we got whipped uh, and treated very badly as we came in, we were stripped and uh, some kind of chemical was poured over us to delouse us. Uh, and, and today, I still call them babies. We were just babies and we didn't know what was happening. And uh, after that delousing and our identity taken away, all our personal items were taken away and then we were uh, put in uh, different uh, like junior, senior, and, and uh, junior, senior, intermediate. Uh, all the uh, smaller kids were separate and when I first entered. So I, I didn't even know my older sisters when I came. So our family circle was completely broken as we entered into to this building. <clears throat> and uh, we hardly spent any time in education. Most of our uh, stay 
that what we did here the first few years that I was here was uh, working, maintaining this building and uh, f making sure uh, we had all had jobs to do. Even as a five, six year old, we all had different jobs to do. The, this school was self-sufficient at that time. I don't know, I can't remember when uh, things changed and geared to more towards education, but I, uh, my mother also came to this school when she was very young, but she got sick and they separated the sickly. They kicked those they, uh, they didn't expect to live or was useless to the school in order to maintain it. They were shipped home immediately. about eight years old when I came here and I didn't know how to speak uh, English at all. My friend Sally was the one that helped me and tell me what the nuns were saying. And when the nuns caught me speaking our language, she swapped it. Pull my hair or pull my ears. There's a whole bunch of us like that. My hair was pretty, really long and they cut it like a really short, eh? And I didn't know what was going on and the things they gave us to eat was rotten, eh? When I was home, mom and dad used to give us decent, you know, good food and that. And I got here and I was asking my friend Sally how come they're giving us this uh, rotten mush and uh, beans wasn't even washed, just rocks in there and everything. And they made, a, made us eat it. Eh? And I got sick a few, year, a few months after I got to school here and I was in bed for most of the time I was here, then I'd ask the nuns to give me some home, uh, school work and they never gave me anything. They locked me upstairs. That was really bad. I was just so skinny, eh? And they'd give us clothes and we'd have to wear it for two weeks at a time, under clothes and top clothes, and they'd give us a uh, cuddler boil, and the big girls spill it down our clothes, and we had uh, woolen sweaters, and that cuddler oil, we'd have to stand that smell for two weeks, say. Eh? That was really, torture or place to be here and I sure hate coming in here right now even. <laughs> 